Hey, it's me, MLB. Here's chapter 43 of Touched, and this one is titled Brian. It's so lovely to finally meet you, he said gently. I have a lot of apologies to make. You stepped out from behind Hawks, and Charlie stood beside him, holding onto his arm as he looked at your uncle bashfully. Suddenly, the shorter of the two males cleared his throat from beside your uncle, passively aggressively demanding an introduction. Oh, your uncle said as his attention was drawn to the shorter male. Uh, Yin, this is my boyfriend, Brian. Hey, babes, Brian said with a brilliant smile and an effeminate hand wave, balancing two pizza boxes in one hand as he popped his hip out to the other side. Oh, hi, you said Charlie to Brian, immediately warming to this ray of gay sunshine. Come in, come in, Hawk said, eyeing off the pizzas. We only just moved today, so you'll have to excuse the mess. Oh, not at all, honey bunch, Brian said as he strode in and made a beeline for the couch and plopped down on it, setting the pizzas down on the coffee table in front of him and then beckoning his boyfriend to follow. Come on, boo-boo, he said as he patted the seat beside him, indicating for your uncle to sit next to him. You stifled a giggle as you watched your extremely masculine-looking uncle walk stiffly over and sit down, commanded by his gorgeous little boyfriend who insisted on calling him boo-boo. Hawk smiled at you and you looked up at him with a confused look on your face. Go on, chicken, he said cheerfully as he walked over and sat down on the lounge opposite with them and with you still half clinging to his arm. First of all, I owe you a huge apology, your uncle said sadly to you. That day that I came to the apartment and scared you out the front, I was more terrified than you were. I lashed out because I was on edge. Oh, it's true, giant Brian piped up. He was acting like a big, tough meanie, but he's such a weird softy. Brian, please, your uncle whispered with embarrassment. Not now. He acts like he's the big boy, but he's definitely the little spoon. Brian said as he flicked one leg up and crossed it over the other leg, delicately running his fingers up his boyfriend's arm. You nodded with a shy smile, stifling yet another giggle. Brian, your uncle hissed again, his cheeks going pink. I won't give you any arm tickles tonight if you keep going. Sorry, babe, Brian said with absolutely no regrets as he pointed his nose in the air and uncrossed his legs, reaching for the first pizza box and opening it. Barbecue chicken, he announced, looking up at you and Hawks. That's mine, Hawks said with a smile as he raised his hand happily. Honey, I have to ask, Brian said as he handed the pizza across to Hawks. Your eyeliner is on fleek. How do you get it so perfect? All natural, Hawks replied with a smug grin. Brian gasped dramatically and put his hand to his mouth in surprise. Bitch, I am so jealous, he said in his dramatic gay voice. It takes me forever to get mine to look like that. And even then, I still look like Susan from Walmart. Oh, not her again, your uncle groaned as he placed his face in his hand. Don't even get me started, Brian replied, holding his hand up, then flicking his fingers out around himself to rid the air of bad aura. Positivity, love and light, he sung softly to himself as he closed his eyes and inhaled gently. I am so in love with everything Brian stands for, you thought, as you watched him complete his little ritual. Your uncle handed you your pizza and the rest of the night continued. You listened quietly while your uncle explained how your mother and father had met and how he had suddenly burst onto the scene and wooed her, sweeping her off her feet and whisking her away. She seemed happy and was head over heels in love with him, but it just seemed too suspicious for your uncle. When your father started to deny her permission to visit him and the rest of the family, that's when your father's true colours started to show and your uncle called him out. Your dad didn't like that, obviously, and demanded that your mum cut ties with everyone. Anthony had always dreamed of the day where he could get his sister back and finally he heard that your father had left so he hatched a plan to rescue her, only to find that she'd been almost brainwashed. I can confirm that, you said sadly. Actually, where where is mum? you asked curiously. Is she at your place? She's in a place where she'll get professional help, Hawke said gently. I'll take you to visit her as soon as they have her assessed and in a rehab program. Okay, you nodded, relieved that she was alright. So, how did you and the number two hero meet? Brian asked, settling back to hear the gossip as he snuggled into your uncle's side. Um, I I was in the closet and he found me, said Shyly. Oh, honey, I support you, Brian said tenderly as he touched his fingers to his chest. You can come out to us. Brian, she's not coming out, not everyone is gay, your uncle deadpan to his boyfriend. She was actually in a closet, correct? He said, looking back at you. You nodded. Uh, girl, you're going to have to explain, Brian said as he sat up. 
You explained and Hawks listened with amusement. He hadn't heard this side of the story. And when did you fall for this gorgeous shy bean? Brian asked Hawks with an exaggerated eyebrow wiggle. The minute she looked up into my eyes, Hawks said in the most romantic voice you'd ever heard him use. Oh, Brian wailed as he clutched his heart. A pained expression of love plastered all over his face. Hawks, you're so romantic, he gushed. You're making me look bad, your uncle said with a sheepish smile to Hawks. Oh, don't sweat it, boo-boo. I still love you, Brian said brightly as he kissed his boyfriend on the cheek. The conversation continued, then came the topic of you getting caught by Hawks when you came back to get the clothes before running away. Then she tried to stab me, Hawks said casually as he leaned back against the couch, one hand on your thigh. Well, uh, well, I just, I thought he was going to catch me and, and take me in. I was scared, you stuttered. Oh, don't worry, baby. I support you. No judgments here. Man's backed you into a corner. Queen's got to protect her fine self. I would have done the same thing, Brian said as he snapped his fingers flamboyantly and raised his glass to take a sip. You giggled. Brian, yesterday you cried for 20 minutes over the goose named Martha, who fell in love with the guy who walked around the park, but he wouldn't let her follow him home. And then, when you found out Martha was a male goose, you screamed for the next 10 minutes about how love is love and Martha the male goose should be allowed to love her man, Uncle Anthony Deadpan. You are soft. You couldn't stab anyone. Oh, this is different, boo-boo. Protect what you love, even if it's your fine self, Brian replied dismissively with a hand wave as he took another sip of his drink. Thanks, Brian, he said with a smile. Oh, any time, baby cakes, he said with a wink and one arm up in gay exaggeration as he sat his glass back down on the table. Squishy bean, that doesn't make any sense, your uncle whispered to his men. Mm, oh, boo -boo, I love it when you call me Squishy Bean, Brian replied in a hushed tone as he leaned over and kissed Uncle Anthony on the lips, causing the taller male to blush profusely. Hawks chuckled. Oh, I'm glad we got such wonderful neighbours. Me too, you piped up. Brian and Uncle Anthony were going to be so much fun to have around. And that is the end of chapter 43. Stay tuned for chapter 44.